Welcome to the Memory Matters Virtual Talk series hosted by the Johns Hopkins Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. So my name is Keenan Walker. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Neurology at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. So I'm going to talk today about the role of vascular risk factors in cognitive decline and dementia. So this is just an overview of what I'm going to talk about today. So first, I'm going to talk about what are vascular risk factors. And then I want to discuss how vascular risk factors might contribute to cognitive decline and dementia risk. And then lastly, I want to talk about how we may be able to reduce dementia risk by actually controlling vascular risk factors. So what are risk factors? Risk factors are things that influence the chance of developing a disease. So in this case, I'm talking about dementia specifically. And we know of a number of risk factors that may affect uh, your chances of developing dementia. The main one is age. Age you know, is strongly associated with dementia risk, and we all inherently know this. But there are a number of other conditions that may influence your risk of developing dementia. These are things like environmental stressors, uh, head trauma, literacy and education, and genetics, so things that you inherit from your parents. Now, Another risk factor, and the one that I'm going to talk about today, are vascular risks. So vascular risk factors are clinical and subclinical conditions uh, that are associated with suboptimal vascular health. So these are things like diabetes, uh, obesity or being overweight, high cholesterol or high blood pressure or hypertension, and then the effects of smoking. These are all examples of vascular risk factor in each of these has been known to be associated with dementia risk to some degree. Now, this is just an example of one vascular risk factor or vascular disease known as uh, heart disease. And this map shows the geographic distribution of heart disease. The red, the darker red represents areas of the country where there's a greater incidence of heart disease. And you can see that some states, you know, we see higher rates of heart disease than others. Now, I want you to compare this map to these two maps which show the geographic distribution of Alzheimer's disease. So this Alzheimer's disease being the most common form of dementia. We see in the darker blue areas of the country are states or regions where there's greater rates of Alzheimer's disease. And the key here is that there's a strong degree of overlap between the regions of the country where we see high rates of heart disease and high rates of Alzheimer's disease. So this is just one clue uh, that's led scientists to think that maybe there's this link between vascular risk factors like heart disease and Alzheimer's disease. Now, the prevalence of vascular risk factors tends to increase with age, and you know, we really start to see this increase in middle adulthood. So the, this figure down at the bottom, we see the blue bars represent the prevalence of vascular risk factors over time, and we see in our 40s, 50s, and 60s that these vascular risk factors, things like diabetes and hypertension, tend to develop. Now, vascular disease is known to combine with other forms of brain pathology or brain disease to ultimately increase our dementia risk uh, later in life. And that's what this figure down here shows. The area in green shows the increasing vascular risk uh, that begins in our 30s and 40s and 50s. And as you see in the pink and the blue region of the figure, vascular disease combines with other forms of brain disease to ultimately increase our risk for developing dementia in our 70s, 80s, and 90s. Now, the one vascular risk factor that's received considerable attention in the scientific literature is high blood pressure or hypertension. So high blood pressure, particularly when it occurs during middle adulthood, has been associated with greater risk for developing dementia in later life. So one of my colleagues, Dr. Rebecca Gottesman, actually published a study recently where she looked at 15,000 individuals and found that those who had hypertension or high blood pressure during middle adulthood, they were about 40% more likely to develop dementia in later life. She looked over a 25-year follow-up period for this. So in this case, hypertension was defined as having a systolic blood pressure above 140 or a diastolic blood pressure above 90. 
or being reliant on hypertensive medication. You'll see in the table over on the left that she also found that prehypertension, blood pressure of 120 over 80 or higher, was also associated with the increased risk for dementia, but this was to a lesser degree. So a number of studies have also shown something very similar. And at this point, the scientific community agrees that high blood pressure during middle adulthood tends to be associated with increased dementia risk in later life. And this figure down at the bottom shows some of the theories for why that might be the case. So the idea is that people who have high blood pressure, hypertension over long periods of time develop vascular changes that actually lead to what's called vascular remodeling or narrowing of our vasculature, a stiffening of our arteries and the development of calcification. And what this does to the brain is that it makes it more difficult for the brain to maintain a consistent and steady blood flow as, our, as the blood pressure in our body changes, you know, just over the course of the day. Now, it's also some work that we've published recently. We demonstrated that people who actually have long-term hypertension during middle adulthood, so high blood pressure over a long period of time during middle adulthood, and then have a decrease, a significant decrease in blood pressure in late life, that this group is also at increased risk for developing dementia. So this, you know, this is an area that deserves additional study. You know, scientists are doing a lot to really understand this link between blood pressure and dementia. And it seems like it's, at this point, less straightforward than we originally thought. Now, another area that's been investigated pretty considerably is diabetes and diabetes' potential role in dementia risk. Some of the work from the group that I work with has published findings showing that having diabetes in middle adulthood is actually associated with about a 77% 77, 77 increase in your risk for developing dementia over a 25-year period. Put another way, diabetes in middle adulthood almost doubles your chances of developing dementia in later life. Now, other studies have shown that the extent of di well, the diabetes severity uh, is actually associated with dementia risk. And this is actually good news for those with diabetes. So you know, diabetes severity is measured by glycemic control. So glucose level or hemoglobin A1C uh, seems to be the thing that is associated with risk of developing dementia. So if you do have diabetes, controlling blood sugar, uh, lowering hemoglobin A1C levels, that seems to reduce your risk for developing dementia. It's also been demonstrated that diabetes that begins during later life uh, doesn't seem to be associated with the mm. risk of developing dementia. And now I wanna talk briefly about obesity because it, you know, a number of studies have shown that obesity does have some relevance to later life dementia risk. So central obesity specifically, when it occurs during midlife, has been associated with an increased risk for dementia. So what is central obesity? Well, central obesity is represented by this apple shape here. It essentially means that one has this deposition of fat tissue around the stomach, around the abdomen area. So this central obesity tends to be strongly associated with dementia risk. And that's in contrast to what we see with uh, individuals who have a uh, fat deposited around the hips, so represented by this pear shape here. This pear shaped type of obesity doesn't seem to be associated strongly with dementia risk. Now, this figure on the left, uh, what it conveys is that individuals with the highest levels of central obesity, they tend to have over double the risk of developing dementia in later life than those with the lowest levels of central obesity. So overall, obesity that occur, central obesity that occurs during midlife seems to be strongly associated with dementia risk, but obesity that occurs during late life does not appear to be a risk factor for dementia. In fact, individuals who are underweight or individuals who are frail in older adulthood, they tend to be at greater risk for developing dementia. So we have this Interesting paradox where in, in middle adulthood, central obesity seems to be strongly associated with dementia risk, but in later life, 
uh, being underweight seems to be associated strongly with dementia risk. So I've shown you a number of examples of how vascular risk factors have been associated with an increased risk for developing dementia. And that begs the next question of whether controlling for these risk factors can actually help people reduce dementia risk altogether. So this figure shows that in 2018, there were about 100 different drugs being tested to treat Alzheimer's disease. And of these, only about five were actually targeting vascular risk. However, I'm happy to say there, there have been some successes in terms of drugs that have been uh, used to target vascular risk. I'm going to tell you about one in this slide. So it's, it comes from the Sprint Mind study. And this study actually looked at whether or not lowering blood pressure can actually help individuals reduce their cognitive decline and risk for developing dementia. And so this study looked at individuals who were 50 and older who had hypertension. And what they found was that individuals who were randomized to the intensive blood pressure arm, and that is those who had their systolic blood pressure treated to a goal of below 120, they had better outcomes than the individuals who were randomized to the standard treatment arm where their systolic blood pressure uh, was treated to a goal of under 140. So it shows that this, in, this intensive blood pressure control was actually helpful in reducing risk for developing mild cognitive impairment, which is this pre-dementia phase, as well as dementia. And you know, the, the relative reduction of risk was about 19% and 17% respectively for these two conditions. So overall, I think we can uh, reduce dementia risk by treating vascular risk factors. And I've shown you an example of how you know, treating hypertension particularly can actually lead to a reduction in uh, dementia risk and risk for this mild cognitive impairment syndrome. Now, it's also likely the case that either prevention or control of these other vascular risk factors also may reduce dementia risk, you know, so control or prevention of diabetes, obesity, cholesterol, and, and smoking cessation, you know, are going to be important moving forward for reducing dementia risk. And there are currently studies that are underway to empirically determine whether or not this is the case. So just to summarize, vascular risk factors are common and they are particularly more prevalent during middle adulthood. Vascular risk in midlife tends to increase risk for developing dementia in later life. Control of vascular risk, particularly things like high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity, is an important way for reducing a dementia risk in the future. And lifestyle changes or medical interventions that improve vascular health may actually also improve brain health, particularly as people get older. So I want to thank you for your attention. Again, my name is Keenan Walker. If, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at this email below. All right. Thanks again for tuning in.